Hi guys, Ms. Bird here again, continuing our learning about ancient, ancient Mesopotamia. Uh, today in this lecture, we're going to learn about a man named Sargon and his people who are named the Akkadians. So here we have a statue of Sargon, pretty cool beard I think. So the southern part of Mesopotamia was called Sumer. You can see it down there at the bottom. Now the people who lived in Sumer are called Sumerians. And as you learned in the previous lecture, Sumer was, it started off as a whole bunch of little tiny farming communities. And Sumer wasn't one country, it was just a whole bunch of little villages. And those villages grew larger and larger until they became cities. And those cities built those thick high walls and towers to protect itself from other cities or from wandering nomads. Each of these cities had its own king and its own army, and these cities fought with each other all the time. We call these city-states because they were cities, but they functioned like a country. Pause, take a note. So these cities put all of their energy into protecting themselves from their neighbors. It took a lot of work to make sure they were protecting themselves. Well, there's one Sumerian who wanted to make all this quarreling among the city-states go away and turn them into one big country. That man was, you guessed it, Sargon. But before we get into how he managed to do that, I want to tell you the legend of Sargon. So this is a very old story and it says that his mother, Sargon apparently didn't have a father, his mother placed him in a basket and sent him floating down the Euphrates River. The basket got stuck in some reeds on the edge of the river near a city-state called Kish. And one of the servants of the king of Kish just happened to be down by the river and he heard a strange sound coming from the bulrushes. And so he wandered over and he saw there in the river, stuck in the reeds, a basket. And that's where this strange sound was coming from. So he looked inside and there was a crying baby, baby Sargon. So this servant took the baby back to the kingdom of Kish and took him to the king where the king said, you have permission to keep this baby and raise it. So Sargon grew up inside the palace. He became strong and handsome and very popular. He even became the cupbearer to the king. Now, his job as cupbearer was to bring the king his wine in a golden cup. Only the most trusted servant would do this. Why? If you said, well, because it would be really easy to poison the king, then you were right. So the king would only trust somebody, you know, with this job that he actually, truly trusted. Well, he probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Sargon made friends with the most powerful people in the palace, including the commanders of the army. And he became so popular with the army that he convinced them to follow him instead of the king. Um, <clears throat> in 2334 BC, he even persuaded the army to kill the king and make Sargon their leader instead. Well, that all happened, but that wasn't enough for Sargon. He didn't just want to be king of Kish, of one city-state. He wanted to be king of the whole land of Mesopotamia. So, what did he do? Well, he started to attack all the city-states around and to take those over. It took him 50 years to do this, but he was able to conquer all of Mesopotamia and a little bit farther as you can see there. Um, he built a new capital of Akkad, you can see there, and he named his new empire Akkadia. Pause. <clears throat> so now Sumer 
and all of Mesopotamia was under the rule of one leader. No longer just a bunch of disconnected city-states, now they were one big country. This was the first empire. Well, what's an empire? Here we have the definition. A group of states or countries under a single supreme authority, such as a king, and in this case, Sargon. Pause, take a note. What might be a problem with this? A lot of those city-states that Sargon captured didn't want to be part of Sargon's empire. And they liked making their own rules and making their own decisions. They didn't like this guy coming in and bossing them around and telling them how to run their city-states, now just cities in his larger state. So how was Sargon going to make sure that they obeyed his rules? What's a, a king to do in a situation like that? Well, stick your army in every city, and that's exactly what he did. He had members of his army living in all these cities to make sure that the people living there obeyed his rules. And if they didn't obey his rules, then the army would punish them or kill them. And this is called a military dictatorship, which is a government where the military is in charge. Pause and take a note. So Sargon's empire did last for years, but the only way that he was able to keep it all together was through this military dictatorship, through forcing his people and threatening them with violence from his army if they did not um, comply with his rules and his way of doing things. So there you have the story of Sargon and his people, the Akkadians, because they lived in Akkadia. All right, that's all for this time. See you next time.